Hey guys, this is Mark here today and today I have here is the Black Shark 2 and this is the first Snapdragon 855 a phone in Malaysia and special thanks to Black Shark Malaysia and Intelligent Ernie for the Black Shark 2 so now let's get into it Okay, let's first get the overall look of the phone. On the left side is the volume button and the left sided illuminating light. On the right side is the power button and the shock mode toggle as well as the right sided illuminating light. And at the bottom of the device is the USB-C port and the dual SIM tray. And the first thing you're gonna be noticed is the lack of audio jack. And now let's get to the design. Okay, let's take some time to look at the beautiful silver I have with me because most of the devices are black, but this one is very, very silverish. I mean, it's silver. I could, I, I, I don't have any word to describe how much I like the color of the, this, and it's so much different than any others. Okay, maybe it's just me. The logo of the Black Shark 2 is illuminating which you are able to change color and also there's different settings whether you want to keep it on or breathing or maybe make the color change from time to time which is called like a rainbow and I think it's a nice touch for all gaming flagship phone and it reminds me similar to a Razer phone and honestly I kind of like it where you can able to change colors here and there and I'm loving the subtle green on the edge and near to the button and because that really really helps like telling you like there's notification here and there so like you get messages it just lights up the body is made out of aluminium which is created for stability and well fashion as well and it's really nice little touch on the edge here and there you'll notice some green edges here and there where actually it looks very nice and obviously the silver really stands out a lot and it depends on you whether you like the silver or black because there's two colors and now they have blue but in Malaysia there's only silver and black and the device really feels good in hand but it does kind of feel slippery but make sure you snap the case on the phone itself feels taller and longer well there is bezel on the device and personally I do prefer the bezel over the full screen display as my big head always accidentally touched the screen which ruined the game experience so I'm definitely good with that. The phone features dual front facing speaker which are designed and positioned so you will cover them with your hands. And the speaker sounds great and a little bit muffled. Tell me what you guys think and I'll do some speaker tests right here now. The display features 6.39 inch OLED display with 1080 by 2340 resolution. We had 19.5 by at 9 aspect ratio. Of course, since it's an OLED display, there will be always on display as well, which is a nice feature. 
and the refresh rate extended beyond 60Hz and like the excellent 120Hz LCD display in the Razer Phone 2. And Blackshot also introduced Magic Press or Master Touch if I'm correct, either one of it, and which is similar to like a 3D touch on iPhone, but it's formed in different intention which is for gaming focus. A firmer press of the screen will trigger a different set of assigned action, and this action will be, can be assigned in the settings. Being a gaming phone, Blackshot has opt for Qualcomm top end chipset, the Snapdragon 855, which come in different configuration in 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage and 12GB of RAM with 256GB of storage and there will be no micro SD expansion and inside there's a massive 4000mAh power battery and with fast charging as well and did I mention the UI is pretty much like stock Android and instead like they call it stock Android or something they call it Joy UI which is pretty good like a little bit bits in here where they change some feature here and there. And the in-display fingerprint works very well, it's quite fast, and I like the design, I mean the animation when you unlock the screen, which is pretty cool, gotta say. Not that bad, I really like it. This is a nice, nice little touch. Okay, it's game time. And Sharp Mode is literally a mode for optimizing games, and clearing up the RAM, blocking notification from coming in. Okay. Let's start trying some super heavy game, Idol Super Rocket. Okay, look at those details, and no, oh my god, look at those cars, they are amazingly good looking. And oh my god, the graphic performance on this phone is crazy. Okay, look how punchy it is, it's so smooth. Basically, I'm just kidding. And of course, you're gonna play games in the higher settings. So right now, you're looking at is a S9, because I don't really play PUBG a lot, but I do play, but I always never got when the chicken dinner. But then again, if you swipe down from the top right of the screen, it brings out the game studio, which allows you to have options and more stuff you wanted to adjust. Like there's a performance here and there, and also where you can adjust your master touch. Okay, let's get to the camera. The Black Shot 2 features a 48 megapixel with an F sort 1.8, and it's 12 megapixel with telephoto lens with an F sort 2.2. It takes that and super sample it down to 12 megapixel. It will have the detail of much higher, higher megapixel. Does that make sense to you guys? And of course, there will be still an AI and HDR. The camera itself takes a lot of details, and the AI of course help enhance the photo a lot more punchier and a lot more details. In my opinion, I'm actually quite impressed with the camera. There is portrait mode and which uses the telephoto lens to shoot. It doesn't seem that bad. In a pro mode, which you are able to switch telephotos and the wide angle. Which is pretty great when you have an option of switching two lenses. The selfie camera features a 20 megapixel shooter with an f-stop 2.0. Color looks a bit washed out and there's HDR always helps in the selfie a lot and dynamic range seems to be good as well. There's portrait mode for all those portrait shots and beauty can be toggled off, so minor stuff. The Black Shot 2 impresses me in so many other levels, not only is a super power gaming phone, it also can be day-to-day -day use. And for me using it as a day-to-day -day use, it really really brings out the whole phone and the performance of the phone where apps are not closed for the entire day which surprises me a lot. You still get the details there which is pretty really pretty great. And overall the device feels good and the only downside is only the speaker but then again you get used to it sometimes where you don't really bother by it anymore. Overall that's it guys, hope you enjoyed the video and make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't and hit the notification bell button so you get notified every single time I upload. And this is Mark here and I'll catch you guys later. Bye!